Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Okay, welcome to another episode of the HET Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Farley Schweigert. And today, I want to have a conversation with first-year faculty member, Rachel Wilkins. Um, we're going to talk today about, we're just going to give a fresh, fresh perspective on mentorship from the view of a young faculty member. I think it's going to be a great conversation about what is working, what is not working, what do we wish we had as a new faculty member, and probably need to do a little disclosure before we start this conversation. Um, we both teach at Arkansas State University. And she may or may not be talking about my mentorship skills, um, but this is the first recorded podcast of the Ray Ray and Furl show, um, as we have it live five days a week here in Jonesboro, <laughs> Arkansas at Arkansas State University. So now we're going to share it with the rest of the world. So welcome, Rachel. Thanks for coming on. Hello. So Rachel, just kind of tell us a little bit of your backstory on how you got to academia first, um, and we'll kind of we'll kind of start with the conversation there. Okay. Um. So I have been in the clinic since practicing or since graduating, passing the boards, all that jazz. I was reached out about adjunct mid semester one year or mid year, and I thought, okay, I I could I could like that. I'll, I'll give it a go. So got it cleared shifted my uh, clinic schedule around. That was a little hinky for a bit, but we got that worked out. Um, did some adjunct, liked it, didn't want to do full-time. So there was still a full-time position open, didn't really want full-time. Um, I'm pediatric is my my area. That's my jam. So if you didn't have peds, I just wasn't feeling it. Um, so stayed in the clinic, did a little bit more adjuncting for a couple years, um, had the DCE position come open, thought, you know what, I feel, I feel ready to make the switch. Um, so here we are, made the switch, got peds, I, I teach peds and hang out with quarrels every day. So it's a somewhat unique, did not think I'd wanted to be an educator this early on, thought maybe, you know, 20 years from now we'll do education, but, um, time was now opportunity opened up so I thought might as well jump on it now because don't know if I'll have this opportunity again I, I think that is a great stair step into academia and doing the adjunct and then coming into full-time you did come in full you did come in full-time in the middle of an academic year which I feel like had some challenges itself instead of starting um, academia so fall to spring um, so coming in Coming in in January, I think, gave you um, some challenges as well. So talk about a little bit about what you feel like you have ne either needed as a first-year faculty member in terms of mentorship or what has worked well for you. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about um, being the mentoree, how that has um, affected your journey into academia. Like you said, coming in mid-year, that, that threw a kink in things. So I didn't get your traditional 
Here is orientation for a new faculty member. The basic things of the handbook. Here's what you need to go to HR about. Here's who you contact about this. It was a very fast and furious, um, hey, you got two weeks to fill out all of this stuff that HR needs, and then you're going to start on this date, and you got to go on this date. And so I think starting in the fall would would have been a lot easier, uh, but it's okay. We made it. Not a big deal. The other thing for me, I had so much presented to me and it was all in with good intentions, but everything was presented to me on day one, it felt like. And coming from the clinic, I didn't know other than the few adjunct things I was doing. I didn't know academia at all. So having so much information brought to me in one time at one place was a little bit overwhelming because I just didn't even know basic terms at that point. So it was more helpful when you had said, hey, when you have a question, come ask me. And it gave me time to gather my thoughts um, because I approached approached this job very much like I approached the clinic, which is, okay, I got a patient that's coming in. Let me do my research. Let me gather my thoughts. Let me come up with a plan. So then if I had questions, I could come to you and say, okay, Farley, what is this or how do I do this or this is what I'm thinking have you done this in the past and you crashed and burned like tell me tell me what has worked that you've already done so I'm not recreating the wheel if you will so so having it letting me have time to digest and and try to figure out my own system and my own questions was much more helpful yeah and I think when you brought this up earlier before you know kind of our pre-show conversation it really triggered something for me in that I think sometimes people get caught up in mentorship at early on week one week two here's somebody new in the mix this is shiny let me tell them all the things Mm -hmm. because also in terms of where you came in um, the DPT program was really starting to amp up writing their self-study for CAPTI so um, that throws another ball of wax on top of all the things that are DCE uh-huh. In and having to inter- no educational terms, um, and and what that is. So so when you said that, I was like, oh. So I think I think one of the big takeaways from that is if you're going to be a mentor for somebody, you got to show up through the middle part of the game, and you got to continue to show up after the new shiny employee shine wears off. Mm -hmm. Uh, in order to really get to the root of helping somebody grow professionally. Yeah. And and I think too, a big takeaway, because we do it with our students, is trying to capture as many learning styles as you can in the classroom. So you can hit all the people as best you can. If somebody would have asked me, how do you learn best day one, then probably information could have been relayed a little bit easier than here's all the things. Oh, that is a good point. That is a good point. Because especially knowing who else, um, the personalities of who else has done their best effort to yeah. mentor. So if you're going to take some, and that's a great takeaway. If you're going to take somebody on, how how do they best learn? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that is great. That is, that is super. Having been a, a full year, um, what are some things that might have helped looking back on a year? Hindsight's 2020. What, um, what are some things on your journey over the last year that haven't worked well? You alluded to, I mean, you didn't allude to, you said all the information all at once with no perspective on that. But are there other things that haven't worked well? That's really just been learning curve on my part, trial and error in a classroom. And I'm like, oop. Didn't, that didn't go like I planned. Um, but the the biggest is really just getting all the information at once and not knowing how to process it. Mm-hmm. So now I feel like we have a good groove. And if I have a question because somebody's referenced tenure process or something act, or faculty senate or something that I have no clue what that even meant. Maybe they said that to me a year ago. But now when they tell me, I can say, oh, oh wait, wait, wait remind me what that is or how do I do that or where do I go about being involved in such and such so um, I will say just throwing me in on certain things didn't always go so well because again I got overwhelming on hey do be on this committee and I'm like okay but I don't actually know 
I'm going to be zero help on that committee, but whatever. So that, that would be, yeah, just, just throwing me in too quickly doesn't work so well. We worked it out. Though. <laughs> I think too, it's um, probably good to line out some of, some of the things you and I have done over the last mm-hmm. year have been weekly meetings about things that could happen in clin ed up to and including daily meetings like our our offices are right next to each other so if you can't find one in one they're usually in the other office is how we work however um i think having some structure like we did last semester that we met yeah uh, at least once a week and we had dedicated time to talking about clin ed systems or any any issues within that because as 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 dces know that that's a whole that's a whole different game from just teaching yes and being in the classroom so i think some of that structured time for last fall was um i felt like helpful in watching you grow into working through those different systems as well yeah for sure because it, it helped me it helped me set time make sure i'm setting time in my day to do this so i'm going and i've done that so like my students are in the clinic now so i on mondays I do DCE things, or I have certain times throughout the week that this is when I'm going to do clin ed related duties. This is when I'm going to do class related duties. And that way, if I stick to my schedule, I can be efficient, get my things done and not get stuff lost in translation. Yeah. And I really wanted you to speak to kind of your system personally and how you work on all of that, because I do feel like watching you grow as an academic, you have a good system moving into all of that, keeping prepared for the classroom and for your clin ed stuff? Honestly, I think the clinic did that to me because I would uh, have my system with the clinic. So this is when I do my notes. This is when I do this. This is when I see this patient, this patient, this patient. Um, And this is when we do progress reports. This is when I'm doing eval. So having that system, I have a really nice large calendar that is for big events that everything goes on that. And then I have my daily planner that this is what I'm going to do today. I'm very gold. So I have to have my checklist. And if I put it on my list, it will get done that day because I really find fulfillment in crossing it off. So uh, it's really just for me keeping everything in a system um, and setting up a schedule. If I have a schedule, I can stick to the schedule. But if I just say I'm going to do something without really a, a good plan to fulfill it, then it won't get done. What is some of your words of wisdom or your advice to other clinicians who are contemplating switching over to academia? You being a year into it will offer some fresh perspective on that. Don't be scared. It's a it, it's a very different world from the clinic, but it's not at the same time. I mean, it has some similarities to it, but it it is a different different job, different roles, but there's still people that are excited about the profession. You're getting to see new faces every day that that really want to be here and they're excited to go and do big things with what they're learning. Um, So don't be scared to make the jump because it is different and then be willing to accept mentorship. So um, that's been my biggest, the biggest thing here has been having help from other people to guide me in what I'm doing. Because had I just said, no, I got this, I can do it on my own, I, I ship would have sank a year ago and never came back up. So really be open to figuring out who is similar to you in your interests. So whether it be DCE related or research or your, your content area that you like, find those people, connect with those people, and then figure out how you all can work together. Because that, that's that been what's helped me so much as other people have said, hey, you know, you pointed me in the right direction for even like the other day when you're like, hey, make sure you sign up for the education portion of APTA. And I was like, never would have thought to do that. So just having people there that are cheering you on too. Um, it's a new new big jump. Don't be scared, but you'll have people that have your back. And then be open to learning because just like we do in the clinic, there's always new things coming out. Go to continuing ed. There's education continuing ed too. Always be a student yourself so that you can be a better educator. Oh, I think that is where we end that conversation. I think that those are some good takeaways from a a different perspective. 
Ray Ray, I appreciate you taking the time to come on the HET podcast today and offer some of that insight. We'll have to continue the Ray Ray and Pearl show, maybe, maybe another episode. <laughs> good thank you for having me all right thank you guys for listening to the HET podcast uh, we really appreciate your time in helping move um, healthcare education forward well I hope that episode was entertaining as much as it was informational and educational if you enjoyed this episode or any of our past episodes we ask you to please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating and review and please share out the episodes to those who you feel may be able to benefit from them. We also urge you to follow us on all social media platforms at HET Podcast and let us know what topics or experts you would like to hear from in future episodes. And just as a reminder, none of the information on today's show should be considered medical advice. It's simply infotainment or edutainment to help educate our audience. For medical advice, we always advise you to reach out to your preferred medical professionals, and we'll see you on the next show.